You're welcome to the house of God. May God bless you for joining us this morning. I want to appreciate uh, the piano voluntary that was given by Brother Godwin Okusoya and then the choir. They've just sang to us, I exalt thee. Uh, we will sing together from CGS 339. There is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. Amen. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4, and Sister Emma is leading us. says, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Amen. Let's sing verses 1 and 2, sitting down. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
Jesus is going to hear us as we pray. Amen. Let's sing again from the same hymn book, hymn 681, 681. It says, when you count the ones who love the Lord, count me. Amen. You will be counted in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing through the three verses again. See it in there. we pray, which is CGS 337, CGS 337, it says, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, Amen. and time shall be no more. Yeah. When the roll is called up yonder. Amen. 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 We will stand to sing verse 3 of this song after that we shall be led in prayer.
we remain standing with our eyes closed, we call upon Brother Fungai Mangere to pray for us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Amen. we thank you. Yes. We glorify you. Yes. We honor you this morning. Amen. Thank you for Jenny message. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for gathering us here Amen. in your sanctuary yes, Lord. to worship you. Yes. Lord, we want to be there yes. when you shall call, your roll call shall be called. Yes, Lord. We all want to be there. Yes. That's why we are here, Lord. Yes, Lord. We have come to seek you. Yes. We, play, we glorify you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Since morning, the Sunday school, you blessed us. Yes. Lord, come down. Amen. Touch every heart. Amen. Save souls. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Touch the sick. Amen. Heal them today. Amen. Lord, we, we want your presence. Yes. When your servants shall stand here, speak. Amen. Speak your word. Amen. Speak your word. Amen. We want to hear you. Yes. And help us, Lord. To be receptive to your word Amen. and change us, Lord. Amen. Lord, bless as we shall at the end of the service, Amen. as we shall go on the waters to pray, Amen. meet us there. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, a very good morning to you all. We appreciate your presence, and, and God bless you for coming. Amen. Uh, we also want to welcome our internet audience. May God bless you for joining us. Amen. We pray that God, who is blessing us here, will bless you wherever you are. Amen. We are the Apostolic Faith Church, located at 13 Penny Road, DA5 3EP Bexley. Uh, just to let you know, amongst our visitors, we appreciate those that have come here for the first time. May God bless you for coming. Amen. If you don't mind, you may stand up if you are here for the first time, just to welcome you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You're very much welcome. You may take your seats. Uh, we also want to appreciate uh, those that are visiting us, our ministers. We have uh, Brother Ade Akrejola and his family. Also have Brother Fungai Mangere uh, with us this morning. And we appreciate your presence too. Um, Just to let you know, at the end of our service, we would like to encourage you to take time to pray, and I believe God will bless you when you do so. Amen. We're going to have Y4C at 2.30 p.m., evening service at 5 p.m. I want to encourage as many as can come to attend to this service. Um, you'll find, as we were learning in our Sunday school today, is the spirit of the last days, and that people only attend morning-only services. It wasn't so in the past, and we pray that we get back to where we belong. Amen. Sunday is the Lord's Day, yeah. and we want to make the most of it. Amen. During the course of the week, Friday, sorry, Wednesday, we do have Bible study at 7.30 p.m., and then Friday, we do have prayer meeting at 8 to 9 p.m. And then on Saturday, we do have a combined virtual prayer meeting between 8 to 10 a.m. 
Next Sunday, should Jesus tarry, Sunday School for All Ages at 10 a.m., devotional service, as we are having now at 11.15. Then we'll be having Children's Church at 2.30, Revival and Evangelistic Service at 5 p.m. We will be having, as we announced last week, uh, making the right career choice event that's being organized by our youths uh, combined with our welfare team for all our branch churches. That's going to be on Saturday, the 1st of October from 2 p.m. through to 5 p.m. This will obviously be held via Zoom. We got the news say early hours of yesterday that the DS of uh, work in the Philippines, Reverend Joy Ruiz, passed away. Um, let us uh, remember to pray for his wife and children and the saints in the Philippines during this time of bereavement that God will be their comfort. Amen. We will continue our service with the first special, which is a choir song. I can almost hear the trumpet sound by Ted L. Friston. And, and then after that, we'll be having the last song, which is, uh, sorry, we have scripture reading from uh, Acts chapter 1, chapter 5, verses 1 through to 5. And then uh, we'll have uh, the last special which is a, choir, a solo, Redemption Draweth Nigh by George Jensen and Brother Godwin will be our soloist. And then we have the word of exhortation for this morning.
our scripture reading for this morning's service is taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 1 through to 5. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, from verse 1 through to 5. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession. Two, and kept back part of the prize, his wife also being private to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Three, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part, to keep back part of the price of the land? Five. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things.
lift up your to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Read from verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Amen. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be the Lord both of the dead and living? But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. God helping us for the few minutes that lie ahead of us, want to talk about our accountability to God. No one is exempted from being accountable to God. For the Apostle Paul, in verse 12 here, expressly said, So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So we have a duty that we owe God of accountability of ourselves unto him. So this sermon is for you as it is for me. I will give an account of myself to God and as, as every one of us will give an account of themselves unto God. I went to Google and uh, dictionary.com says the word accountable simply means subject to the obligation to report explain or justify something responsible or answerable. Accountability is the state of being accountable, liable, or answerable. In the working world, that's accountability in the workplace is important because Individuals who feel responsible for their actions may be more likely to perform their tasks well and efficiently as opposed to those who are not accountable to their actions. Again, a workplace that values accountability may also foster greater commitment and increased employee happiness. You know, if you know you have done what you are supposed to do well and you know you are re you're rewarded for it, you are happy. Yeah. So we are accountable for the good as well as for the bad. But as far as God is concerned, thank God for redemption is here with us. Amen. We can be accountable for a good life before our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We don't exist for ourselves. We don't live to ourselves. So we live for God and to whom we will give an account of our lives. So that's why in Romans 14, 7, we are told, none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. There are some people who think after they die, it is over. Well, as far as God is concerned, that's the beginning of eternity. And that eternity, you're either with God or without God. But the reason for coming to fellowship is because we want to be close to this God. Yeah. We want to be with him in eternity. Yeah. So we need to understand that we don't just exist to cease to exist. We exist to remain existing unto eternity. So this life is only but short compared to eternity, time without end. This is why we, by the grace of God, have to tell each other the truth. There are people who want to hear what their ears are itching to hear. But I want to tell you, by the grace of God, we speak the oracles of God. Amen. We preach the word of God, Amen. salvation unto all men. Yes. That whosoever believes unto Jesus Christ, our Savior, can be saved. Amen. And we want you to go to eternity and stand before God, having known that I heard. There is another thing to say I did not know. But if you knew and you're accountable for your eternity, I'll, I'll pray that God will give us wisdom. Amen. That we be accountable to God on the righteous side with God. Amen. Not the other way around. Well, God will help us. Amen. Amen. As ministers, or for those that have stood behind this pulpit, we know many things happen. At times people come to church, they've been working night through. But God will give you the strength Amen. to hear and be awake. Amen. But at times, the devil makes us to want to sleep when it's time for service. And we are accountable to this God for our actions. So may God keep us awake Amen. during the time of the service, Amen. during the time of the sermon, Amen. and at times, well, we all are experiencing different issues. Some people may not be uh, feeling well, but I would encourage you for the few minutes that lie ahead of us to be awake Amen. and uh, get the most out of what God has for us. So, in verse 11 of Romans chapter 14, we are told, It is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow. Amen. There is no one exempt from that, and every tongue shall confess to God. We will give account of ourselves. Yeah. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 13, we are told, Examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Now, except for those who are reprobates, of course, for those that are born again, that are living for Christ, we know. That we are in him as he is in us. Yes. Thank God salvation gives us a no-so experience. Amen. We are aware, we are conscious of it. Amen. That we have been saved from our life of sin. Amen. As well as sinners are, 
conscious of their sinful condition. Amen. Thank God for the Spirit of God. It, it, it tells us where we belong. So we want to do that examination now. We, we don't want to wait for the 11th hour. No. Whilst we have time today yeah. is the time to examine the way we walk before this God. Yeah. I need to be sure of my salvation. What does it mean to be saved from our life of sin? John said, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. That's what it means. Yeah. If you are born again, if you uh, <coughs> profess salvation, then you cannot sin. Yes. God. No. Amen. But if you can, then that's not the salvation that the apostles spoke of. That's not the salvation that we know of. For this salvation gives us power Amen. to live a life yeah. above sin. Yes. That, that's what salvation does. Yeah. So we, we don't want to uh, live a mediocre type Christianity, which is like, <laughs> I don't want to call it Christianity anyway. Christianity, when we are saved, we are Christ-like. So Christians live a Christ-like life. Yes. If you're not yet there, the grace of God is still there. Amen. You can be saved. Yeah. Don't live a condemned life. Amen. There is victory for you Amen. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Proverbs said in 28.13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Yes, we want to prosper. We want to, uh, you know, you, you want to be happy of your Christianity. Yeah. You want to enjoy serving God. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not burdensome, burdensome. It is a good thing to serve the Lord. Yeah. So we, we want to prosper yeah. in serving this God. Yeah. So he who covereth his sins shall not prosper. So you don't start by covering up your sins. When you come to God, you confess and forsake. Yes. And God will help you. Amen. He will forgive Amen. everything that you have done and wipe away every sin by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So 28, 13 of Proverbs, it tells us, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have Mercy. Amen. Amen. So the mercy of God is there for you and me yeah. if we forsake and confess our sins. Amen. Now we have um, examples of Achan. When the Israelites conquered Jericho, it was a great victory over Jericho where God brought down that great city of Jericho, which had fortified walls, when the Israelites only shouted and sounded their trumpets. And the walls came tumbling down, flat, and they were able to conquer the city. Now, when they were, God had given them a decree that they were not supposed to take anything from that city as a bounty for the war. But then... Achan thought, well, there is something that he could get. He saw goodly garment with his eyes, and then he saw some probably gold and other things that he thought he should take and hide. Now, we are told lots were cast to find out who had caused Israel to suffer defeat at Ai. And they knew it was because Achan had taken the Akes thing. Now, because of his actions, he not only died himself, but with his whole clan of his family. So may, may God help us to know that we are accountable for our actions. 
But we, we don't want, by the grace of God, to be in such a situation. We read of Ananias and Sapphira from Acts chapter 5. It is a sad account in the Bible. The sad thing is um, they wanted to do good things. Yeah. They wanted to please God. And in their attempt to please God, they hatched a plan. And that was Ananias and Sapphira, husband and wife. And their plan was, let's sell our plot of land as they had seen the apostles and the saints of God at that time bringing everything together in the fellowship and praising God and saying everything that belongs to someone else belongs to all of us. Yes. Great stuff. Yes. They, they had good intentions. Yeah. They had a good motive from the beginning. They wanted to do like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Just like you and I, we come to church. We want to please God with our lives. But here we find something crept into their hearts. And they said, yes, let's sell our plot, get the proceeds of our plot, and let's go and give the apostles half of what we have. And then we tell them, that's everything that we have given you. Now, verse 2 of Acts chapter 5, it says, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being private to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is what they did. They, they, they thought the apostles were just men. They didn't know that these were servants of God. Just like even as we are now, we, we have different positions and uh, roles that we occupy in the house of God to serve him. These were apostles and they were responsible for leading the church then. And they brought and thought that Peter and the apostles are just like everybody else. But Peter, filled with the Spirit of God, in verse 3, he said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back, back part of, thy, of the price of the land? This is what happens. Our actions are to God. Yes. The life that we live is for God. Yes. Everything we say or do is to God. Yes. Well, we may hide from each other. If you want to use that term, we may be savvy or clever in the way we present issues or do things in a way as to reveal ourselves to, to show ourselves to be of a good character or to be accepted of one another. But this is what happened. Said, what you did, you lied to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God that was there where you were. We, we say God is omnipresent, isn't it? Yes. He's omniscient. Yes. He's omnipotent. Yes. So he was there when they were hatching this plan, he heard their words. When they were saying, we'll keep back from the apostles what we have. And then God told them, now look, that land belonged to you before you sold it. That land belonged, that what you got from the selling that land belonged to you even after you sold it. So, what, what, what was the reason then for them to say, 
we bring this to the apostles. It belonged to them. They should have just kept it. Yeah. Or they could have just sold and said, we are going to give half of what we have sold. Everything belonged to them. Yeah. But they decided to lie and say, we are giving you everything of what we sold. So this is what the devil does. He tells people to lie point blank. This was a point. There was, there was, no, there was absolutely no need whatsoever for this action to have happened. But for us to learn, for us to learn, he said, whilst it remained, verse 4, was it not thine own? That's a question. And after it was sold, was it not thine own, in thine own power? It was. So, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? We have a song which says, Is thine heart right with God? The problem of man and women or people on this side of the world is the condition of our heart. Yes. If my heart is right with God, what comes out of it, my intentions and everything that I do with myself is pure to God. Amen. But if my heart is problematic, nothing good comes out of it. Say, thou hast not lied unto men. This is our problem. We think our actions are to one another. They are not. And this was very clear. You have not lied unto men. Now, when we think we've, we, we, we've escaped it. And never escape it. At times we say socially, what are called socially desirable things, what you know I would want to hear. Or what you know someone else would want to hear. That's not it. We have to speak the truth from our hearts. This is the, where the crux of the matter is. You lied, but it says unto God. So we are accountable to God with our lives. Everything that we do, we are accountable to this great God of heaven. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up ghost. And great fear came upon all them that heard these things. At right times we want to pass on the back to others, isn't it? Say, uh, my actions are because of someone else who did something else that caused me to do what I then did. Well, you would think an Ananias wife would change. But said in a space of about three hours, she came, not knowing what was done. And then she came in, and then Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. May God deliver us from such a spirit. And then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? You know, they... They, this, is, this is what they did. In as much as they were lying against God, they tempted the Spirit of God. Trying to see whether the Spirit of God was going to know what they have done. But it was very clear. They tempted the Spirit of, of the Lord, and Peter said, Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall 
carry thee out. Amen. Then she fell down straight away at his feet and yielded up ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Now, what, what are we saying here? If my wife, as an example, does something wrong, I, I, I have to spell it out. That is not wrong. You can imagine if one of them had said, do you think what we're doing is right here? It would, have changed, it would have changed the course of their life. Yeah. So we don't partner in doing things against God. We, 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 we don't take part in the sinful nature of the sinful. We stand for the right that we know that we are accountable to God for as long as we live. So, Children are accountable for their actions, as the parents are. The workers are accountable for their actions, as the employers are. The governments are accountable for their actions, as the civilians are. So everybody is accountable for their actions to God. Because he is the one that we are accountable to. Yeah. For we do not exist for ourselves, but we exist for this God who made us to be. Amen. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is sin. So if, if you know to do good, don't ever say it's because of somebody else. Your actions are for yourself. My actions are for myself. I am accountable for what I do. Regardless of what I saw somebody else doing, what I heard someone else doing, it, it doesn't matter. Regardless of who tells me to commit sin against God, it doesn't matter. The three Hebrew boys, they said, we will not listen to what Nebuchadnezzar says. We will not listen. We will not bow down to this image that the king has put up. We won't do so. Whether God spares us or not, let it be. But God kept them. Daniel didn't say after they've seen that he was praying and uh, a decree has been passed on that whoever is seen praying to God, uh, they were going to um, cast him into the Lion's den, he, he, he did not stop praying. He continued praying. Yes. Ended up cast into the den of lions, but God kept him there. Amen. But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, that's Matthew 12, 26, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thou, thy words thou shalt be condemned. Yeah. So it's by what we say yes. and how we say it. We will be either justified or condemned. But God forbid that we be condemned. Amen. We will amend our ways Amen. whilst it is still today. This life is vanity. Vanity of vanities. That's what the preacher says. For what profit hath a man in all his labor which he taketh under the sun? It is vanity. Ezekiel says, The soul that sinneth he shall die. 18, 20 to 21. The son shall not bear the iniquity of their father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked shall turn from his sins that he hath committed, and 
keep all my statutes Amen. and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Amen. So there is life for those that repent. Yes. We go to Act Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We have a very good, I would say, uh, portrayal of this world in a simplified way. Ephesians chapter 6, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. When it comes to accountability, children are accountable for their actions. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long. So children, you have your part to play. And then fathers, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. So parents have their own obligation and they are accountable for their actions too. So it won't be because of my father. There's nothing like that. It won't be because of my children. You will stand for what you know you are supposed to uphold in terms of living for God. Yeah. Servants, be obedient to them that are masters. We're talking of those that are working in the uh, industry. If you are employed or you are an employer, verse 5, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. So everything unto Christ. Yes. What would Jesus do? Yes. Not with eye service. No. As men pleasers. You know, they are men pleasers. People that want to be found on the righteous side of men. Yes. Men pleasers. But as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we, we do everything that we do as servants of God from the heart. Yes. Out of a will, willing heart, pure heart, we serve this God. Amen. Seven, with good will, doing service as unto the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. As far as God is concerned, we are all on the same level. And we are all accountable for what we do. Same thing happens even in church. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. So for congregation members, their part is to submit. For, and we are told, these leaders, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account. There is responsibility there, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable unto you. Paul, Joseph in Potiphar's house, he said something like this. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. He was telling his master's wife that this thing that you're after that I should do with you and sin against God, it is not good. I should not do it because thou art his wife. You are my master's wife. Why do you want me to do that with you? How then, this is where the word of God tells us, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So he wasn't accountable to Potiphar. Neither was he accountable to Pharaoh. He was accountable to God. And because he feared God, he fleed for his life, even though it landed him in jail. 
Paul the Apostle said in Acts 16, 19 to 20, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. He had a heavenly vision. He met Christ on his way to Damascus. And he said, I will do that which pleases him. Amen. So he wasn't disobedient. He knew he's accountable to God. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 6 to 8. Paul said, For well, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. Amen. I have finished my course. Amen. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, Amen. and not me only, but unto all them that also, unto all them also that love is appearing. Yeah. He is going to appear unto Amen. all those that love is appearing. Amen. To conclude, it was the preacher Solomon who said. Let us hear the conclusion of, of the whole matter. Yes. Fear God right. and keep his commandments. Yes. For this is the whole duty of man. Yes. For God shall bring every work into judgment yes. with every secret thing, yes. whether it be good or whether it be evil. We want the Lord to stand before us and say, well done, Amen. good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. God bless you. We'll sing 52 from uh, Spoke, and the altars are open. You can come forward and pray. ourselves in the blood of Jesus, having been weighed on the balances of your world and are found wanting, we're asking, oh God, that you will cleanse us today, that you will wash us and make us like Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you will look down from heaven and have mercy. Save today, oh God, 
We pray that you will sanctify. Lord, we pray that you baptize the Holy Ghost and fire. Help us to reconcile our way with you, Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray.